Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, luckily, I got myself extracted from under the bus, Andy Fromey, so I can present some of the work uh, Pedro tasked me with and give you an overview on the Hypocryo My City Day. Oh. So, just uh, as Andy showed in his talk, the Hypocryo My City Day is a subclass in the class Sordario My Seeds, which was uh, typified by the order Hypocryalis. So why are these fungi so important? Well, they're ecologically diverse. So they occur both in terrestrial environments as well as aquatic environments, and some in extreme uh, environments as well. Uh, most of our well-known plant pathogens uh, are classified in this subclass. Uh, several are microparasites, and for this reason have been used as biological control agents. Uh, majority are saprobes. Um, Several are human, animal, and insect pathogens. Uh, several have been extensively used in industrial and pharmaceutical applications, for example, for the production of biofuels, uh, as well as antibiotics. Um, some are food spoilers, but not only as post-harvest, but also uh, processed foods. And then a large number of them produce very important mycotoxins. Uh, mycotoxins sorry. <laughs> So uh, the subclass is further divided in six uh, orders, the uh, coronaforalis, the glomeralis, the hypocryalis, the melanosporalis, the microscalis, and then the sorvaeralis, uh, with several families still uh, classified as incertocetus, with an additional five genera, which has not yet been placed in any order or family. So uh, this is the tree. Uh, uh, based on LSU and RBP2, and I think I'll end my talk here, so uh, no, I'm just kidding. And um, I have a, uh, there was a lot of problems uh, with the sequences available, made available to me. Um, for instance, the only order that was uh, um, monophyletic based on the gene regions here was the uh, Corano foralis, and all these rest, all the other orders mixed up together. So the main problem with this was, uh, for instance, the LSU sequence data, most of these were too short. They only spanned the D1, D2 region. And then with the RBP2 sequences, they were different parts of the gene. So it was quite difficult to, to, to get them aligned. So for the purposes of this talk, I just decided to focus on the LSU as this was the best uh, sampled and uh, most available. So this is the, the, the tree based on LSU. Um, and what we actually see is that most of the orders, well, all the orders are monophyletic. Um, then we have some families, the, the families which have not yet been uh, placed in any order. And then we have some genera that has not been classified uh, either. So let's move on to the orders. So in the order uh, Corona feralis, we have five families um, with the, the, the genus and species they were uh, typified with here. And uh, if we look at the numbers for each family, um, we see in the Bertiaceae that there are two genera accepted in this family. However, there are no X-type cultures, the living X-type cultures available. Uh, for the Ketus feriaceae, there are two genera accepted with a further nine genera that have been synonymized under these two genera. The Corona feriaceae, I have only one genus uh, accepted. Then we, the, the Chikiaisi, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, there are 15 genera accepted, uh, of which only 10 genera, uh, of which is for 10 genera, there are no sequence data available. However, there is one genus with a living X type which has not yet been sequenced. Then we have a further 17 genera that has been synonymized. And then in the Scortechniaisi, we have 11 genera that are accepted. So this is just the tree to, to, to illustrate uh, uh, the, the, the families in this order. And we see that they're nice, uh, nicely monophyletic. The only family missing here is the Corona foraceae, uh, but uh, past uh, phylogenetic studies have shown that it is monophyletic. So what do we know about these fungi? They are considered as common wood-inhabiting fungi, saprobes mostly, although some are also mycoparasites. Uh, they're characterized by uh, superficial escomata uh, with a basal stroma um, and have a distinct or indistinct or lack of ocular opening. 
Uh, some genera in this order, and this is also unique for this order, has a, a quail corpus structure, which is basically a structure in the ascomata uh, that functions to rupture the ascomata and disperse the ascospores. Uh, these fungi are notoriously difficult to culture, and that's probably why there are not uh, many X type uh, cultures available for these genera. Uh, several mono, uh, yeah, as I said, several monotypic genera, uh, there are no cultures or DNA sequence unfortunately available, and then there are a few small nomenclature issues that need to be sorted. Uh, for instance, the, the Ketus uh, sorella versus Odemium versus uh, Vera Mycena. However, uh, based on literature, I believe this uh, generic name will probably take preference. So uh, when we move to the Glomeralis, this is a relatively new order, recently introduced. Um, it includes uh, three families. Um, uh, two of the families, the Australicaceae and the Glomeriaceae, are monotypic, so they're only based on a single genus. And then the Ret uh, Reticulaceae uh, includes three genera. And these uh, uh, families are quite monophyletic, so there's no, no big problems uh, associated there. So these fungi generally have a global distribution and mostly associated with dead plant material or are important plant pathogens. Um, they are characterized by darkly pigmented ascomata and uh, which sometimes become sclerotial. And then uh, there are still a few nomenclature issues that needs to be addressed here, although I think they're pretty much straightforward and will be addressed by the various working groups on these fungi. Then we come to, to my favorite group, the Hypocreolis, um, probably the biggest order in this subclass, uh, as it includes nine families. Uh, um, so these are the first four, and these are the, the, the next um, families. And there are still several uh, genera classified as Incertocetus. So if we quickly have a quick look at each family, uh, the Bionectriaceae, uh, at this moment 38 genera are accepted of which there are only eight generic types available. And then a further 10 ge uh, 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 genera without, uh, and of the uh, further 10 genera without any DNA sequence data. Uh, and then there are the, uh, 28 genera have been synonymized. Then the Claviceptaceae, there are 62 genera accepted in this uh, family. Only nine generic types available, uh, 30 genera that have no DNA sequence data, and then 29 synonymized. And the Cordyceptaceae, we, there are uh, at this moment 15 uh, genera accepted, four generic types available, two genera without DNA sequence data, and then there's 16 genera that have been synonymized. And the Hypocreaceae, uh, we have 16 genera accepted, uh, three generic types available, six genera without DNA sequence data and a further 34 genera have been synonymized. We get to the Nectriaceae. At this time, 72 genera are accepted. This is also probably because this is the best stu studied family uh, of, in the whole class or subclass. Uh, there's only 36 generic types available. Um, 17 genera have no DNA sequence yet, although I tried my best to remedy that, but uh, just couldn't. Then 79 genera have been synonymized. In the Nisleaceae, um, uh, this is a family that actually needs quite a lot of attention, and you'll see now, uh, see now when I show the tree, um, there, there are 15 genera accepted in this family, of which only four generic types are available. Um, and seven of these genera have no uh, DNA sequence data. In the Ophiocordyceptaceae, uh, 11 genera accepted. Five generic types are available, of which for two, uh, no DNA data is available. And then the Stachybotriaceae, a relatively new family. Um, uh, three genera accepted at this moment, uh, and there's only one generic type available. In the Telachlidiaceae, also, also another new family in, in this order, there are two genera, and there's only one of these have a generic type. Then in the Incertocetes, uh, Incertocetes sorry, um, 43 genera are accepted, 
but only 18 of them have generic types. And then 17 genera have no DNA sequence data. And when I say actually say DNA sequence data, there's also no living culture available to isolate DNA from. And then we have 37 genera synonymized. So this is the ideal tree for the hypocreolis. And this tree is just based on the type genera for each family. However, when we add the inserticidas and some of the uh, genera that's traditionally classified within these families, we actually see that uh, uh, there's a few problems. I will please ignore the bottom part of, of, of this tree. Uh, these, uh, th this is just a sampling, uh, due to the sampling that they are not. But uh, the families indicated are blue, are where the, the, the type genera are, are, are located. And basically, the, the two families that appear to need the most attention are the Nisleaceae, as they, the, the, the Nislea, the type of the family occurs here. However, there's some of the genera also clusters here at the bottom. But the biggest problem is the Bionectriaceae. And the reason being, uh, there's a lot of genera in, in there that there pre was no DNA data available for, and I was able to get some DNA uh, data for some of them. Um, for instance, oh, sorry. Uh, there's also two clades here um, that's closely related to the Bionectria, uh, Bionectria AC, which, is, which I just named for now the Incetocetus 1 and the Incetocetus 2. So this clade includes all genera that are characterized by a chromonium like uh, asexual morph, and in the Incetocetus 2 are uh, basically ge uh, aquatic genera. And they, m most of the, these genera have not yet been classified. So what do we know about this order? It's got a global distribution and it's ecologically diverse. Uh, it's generally characterized by a likely to brightly colored soft textured uh, uh, um, ascomata. Um, and uh, most of the nomenclature issues have been resolved. However, a large number of genera yeah, still needs to be epitopified or typified in some other way. So we move on to the uh, Milanus uh, which in any tree was uh, grouped, I can't remember quite well now with other group, however, I could get it showed to be monothletic. Um, in this order, only one uh, uh, family is known, the uh, Serratus stomataceae. Um, there are 11 genera accepted in this order, of which only one has a generic uh, type, and it's this green isolate indicated here. Uh, there are six genera, further genera, that have no DNA data, and then there were, there's 21 genera that have been synonymized. So the, uh, basically, uh, there's, uh, Suratu, uh, this is the family, so probably we'll need to introduce a new family for this group. However, this sampling needs to be increased before we can do anything like that. So uh, these fungi are mostly uh, considered mycoparasites occurring on rotting plant material as, and isolated from soil. Uh, they have uh, characteristic, characteristic uh, uh, translucent paraphysia, uh, paraphysial or claystitial ascomata. Um, however, there's still quite a large number of taxonomic as well as nomenclature issues that still needs to be addressed and so several typifications is required here. Then we go to, into the uh, micro scalis. Um, tomorrow, Valalem de Vue will probably uh, go deeper into this group, so I won't, won't say too much. Um, just quickly show, show the numbers. Um, so in the Serratu City Daisy, there's eight genera accepted, for, uh, for which only five generic types are available. In the Kaudu Fodiliaceae, there are two genera accepted with one generic type. Gondwano uh, Daisy, there are two genera, and they're all pretty much the, the, the fine. Then probably the, the family with, uh, in this order that's got the uh, biggest problem is the Halus feriaceae, mostly aquatic fungi. Um, in this family, 70 genera are accepted. However, of these, only 10 generic types are available. Uh, a further 26 genera have no DNA sequence data, and six genera have been synonymized as, as, thus far. And then the micro 20 genera accepted, eight generic types available. 
and uh, five genera have no DNA sequence data. And obviously there's some also classified here as inserted seeders, and these include five genera uh, of which only three have gen a generic types available. So this is just the tree from the LSU, but like I said, uh, we will probably expand a bit more on this. So these fungi are also ecologically diverse, uh, include some very important plant pathogens, which are usually also associated with beetles, bark beetles and so on. Um, they usually produce non-stromatic black uh, perifacial ascomata with long necks, and the ascospores are sometimes ornament, uh, for ornamentations. Uh, there are still several taxonomic and uh, nomenclature issues that need to be addressed, especially in the uh, Hylosphereaceae and also several typifications are required. So uh, we move to the next uh, order, which is the Savorealis. Uh, this is, uh, uh, in this order, no families have yet been assigned, although it includes uh, 12 genera. However, there's only two generic types available. So, so this is the tree. So most probably uh, what will happen is that this larger clade will probably be classified as one family and these two clades as other additional two families. However, more sampling is probably required for these bottom two clades uh, before we can do that. Then these are mostly aquatic fungi and isolated from submerged wood. Um, they're characterized by brown to black uh, perifacial ascomata. And there are a few small uh, uh, nomenclature issues that will be addressed, but they appear to be quite straightforward. Um, then we come to the families which are uh, uh, classified and set to cedars in the ordeal level. Um, so uh, if we take a look at these families, we see in the Etheroferaceae two genera accepted, however there are no generic types. In the Falco Gladiaceae, there are one is, is monotypic, and there is types, luckily. And we have the Jigunio AC, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce that one. We have three genera accepted, for which only one genera, there is a type available. The Plectus Feraleaceae, which is an important family, as it includes very important uh, plant pathogens, such as Verticillium and Plectus Ferella. Uh, there are only uh, seven genera accepted, for which only four generic types are available. The Torpedo sporaceae uh, includes two gen uh, uh, genera, for which only one generic type. And then there is uh, additional uh, five genera, which has not yet been classified. So if we quickly have a quick look at these, it would appear that um, these are probably going to be three new orders introduced. Uh, so the Plectophereaceae, which is closely related to the Hypochereaceae. Then we have the, these three families, which are generally aquatic fungi will probably be classified in a new order. The Falco Gladiaceae, which is quite separate, but closely related to the Corona Feralis, uh, on the long branch, um, will probably be a new, new uh, 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 order as well. And then we have these, uh, uh, although these represent some of the genera that are classified as uh, inserted cedars, uh, more sampling is still required to, to, to play give them a better classification in future. So if we quickly take a summary of the Hypocreomycidae day, uh, at present there are six or, uh, uh, orders known with, uh, with probable addition of three new orders coming in the near future. There are 28 families with who knows how many families that will be added quite soon. Uh, in total, uh, and this is based on classical classification as well as phylogenetic studies, 700 and 74 genera have been classified in, in this subclass, of which 460 are still accepted. Uh, a further, uh, the remaining 314 have been synonymized at some stage under these uh, genera. Um, for only 135 genera, uh, uh, confirmed epi or X-type cultures are available. Uh, a further 140 genera have no sequence data. And then, uh, looking at the literature, I was able to locate around about 320 types or specimens for these 460. However, I've got no, I've got no idea in which condition they are and whether they, uh, we will be able to get DNA out of these or will be allowed to get DNA out of these. So, to conclude, 
Um, only 70% of the genera accepted in Hypograma City Day have DNA sequence data available, although it does not, does not reflect the generic types. Only 30% of the genera have living type cultures available at present. Uh, compiling all the data, uh, I was able to identify around about 20 candidate strains for epitopification just from the European culture collections. So, uh, but I haven't yet looked at any other uh, culture collections. Um, several new orders and family will have to be introduced at some stage. And then the question comes, uh, uh, will people help recollect and typify uh, these fungi from the type localities? Um, another problem is several genera were synonymized prior to the DNA age. So we probably have to test whether these uh, synonymies uh, still stand up to the test. Um, the other question is DNA from specimens. Uh, most of the specimens that I could locate uh, date from the 17th and 18th century, with some from the 19th century. Uh, so whether there's still any DNA or uh, possible to isolate from these, that's the question. And whether the, the Fungaria will allow us to do that, I actually doubt, uh, as it's quite destructive. Um, some nomenclature uh, issue still needs to be resolved. And uh, when I quickly made these slides, I had a quick look on GGI, uh, JGI's uh, uh, website, and I actually saw that there are only 41 genomes available for the Hypocreome City Day, which represent 15 genera. However, none of these are from generic types. Then I just want to thank all the contributors um, who provided uh, some insights as well as some sequences. Uh, I want to thank you all. Thanks.